Hey guys, what's up? Zijin here, and this is the Ulephone Metal. This is a direct competitor to the Verni Thor. Almost the exact same specs, same processor, same RAM resolution, same size, almost the same price. It's within about five bucks. But the Ulephone Metal has a metal body. So let's see whether the Ulephone Metal is a good device and doesn't have what it takes to edge out the Verni Thor as the premium mid range device. This phone is without a doubt the highest quality phone I've touched that costs 100 bucks. It feels higher quality than my Redmi 3 and even a little bit higher quality than the Yumi Super, which costs twice as much. The body is a combination of magnesium and aluminum and it feels exquisite. I remember being impressed by the metal build on the $70 Blue Boo Xfire 2, but this is a whole new level. I would go so far as to say it feels as high quality as the HTC One M9 and it's a little bit less slippery. You find the sensors up top and the capacitive buttons on the bottom. The glass stretches across the entire device and curves into the body, and it looks incredible because it looks like a bezel-less display, but when you turn it on, you do see the bezels on the side. There are two volume buttons and the power button, which has concentric circles on it so you can differentiate between the buttons without looking at the buttons themselves. The SIM tray takes a maximum of two cards, a nano SIM, micro SIM, and a micro SD card slots. Flipping the phone over, and the fingerprint sensor is recessed so you can find it without looking. The camera sticks out just a tiny bit because of the curved back, it is curved quite drastically, so even though the phone is over 9mm thick, it doesn't feel that way. As a result, the phone fits very well into my hands and is real easy to use. I absolutely love the build quality here. We have a 5-inch display made by Sharp, and it is an on-cell display and has Gorilla Glass 3. The resolution is 720p, which is more than enough on the screen. The screen is quite colorful and vibrant and nice to look at, and it tops out at 450 nits of brightness, which is enough to use in sunlight. The touch sensitivity is not as good as my Redmi 3 or the Verni Thor. You have to touch a little bit harder to get the screen to recognize your finger, but it's not too big a deal. Hopefully it's a software issue and Ulephone fixes this ASAP. The screen will be pretty good once Ulephone fixes the touch sensitivity. The rear firing speaker is a teensy bit below average when it comes to audio quality. Bass is obviously absent and mids and highs are a little bit airy for my taste. However, it does get moderately loud, coming quite close to the volume my Redmi 3 outputs. Have a listen for yourself. The 3050mAh battery is made by Sony and I'm expecting some pretty decent battery life here. I did two tests, first I reloaded the webpage every 10 seconds and the phone died after 8 hours and 35 minutes. Then I looped the video until it died and it lasted for 9 hours and 40 minutes. Those are slightly better results than the Verdi Thor and very decent as well. I ran the obligatory Pokemon Go battery test as well and the phone was able to play that game continuously for about 3 hours and 20 minutes. I was able to get a regular 4 hours of screen on time daily that consisted of news, podcasts, maps, and gaming, and that does not include Pokemon Go. I would end the day with around 10% battery life left. Charging takes surprisingly long, about 3 hours from 0 to 100%, and the phone gets pretty hot during charging. Light, medium, and heavy users will be able to make it through a day no problem. Heavy users might need a quick charge later in the evening, but that's pretty unlikely. We have stock Android 6.0 Marshmallow with a few tweaks and additional features. They are mostly welcome except for the changes to the settings menu and this new circular type launcher, which I disabled immediately. Other than that, it's pretty much stock Android, which is real nice. The fingerprint sensor works okay. It's not too fast. It's slower than other phones like the Yumi Super and the Nexus 6P, but at least accuracy is okay. You can wake the phone from sleep using the fingerprint sensor, or you can use the on-screen gestures. The best part is double tapping the screen to turn on and double tapping the home button to turn off. With this, you never have to touch that power button at all. Performance is pretty good. The octa-core processor can open and close apps quickly. It is a little slower than the Yumi Super with the newer Helio P10 processor, but just slightly. Multitasking is great with 3 gigs RAM, and I could game intense games on low settings, but not so intense games like Pokemon Go ran pretty well. It scored about 39,000 in N22. I surprisingly get 3G here in Canada with this phone and LTE, and LTE and 3G speeds are quite decent. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth performance work quite well, and GPS performance was decent. I was able to play Pokemon Go on this device, but I had to turn off AR because there is no gyroscope. The Sony IMX149 sensor is used to keep costs down. The rear 8 megapixel camera takes decent pictures, but not great pictures. Color is okay, there is some contrast in color, but nothing great. If you take photos in ideal conditions, photos can come out looking pretty decent, 
In low light or even less than ideal conditions, the camera immediately overexposes and there is a lot of grain and over sharpening happening. The front facing camera has a pretty bad 1.3 megapixel resolution and it is really hard to get a decent photo from the front facing camera. Video quality isn't that great either. In ideal conditions, video quality is decent. In less than ideal conditions, the quality is definitely not decent. So is the phone worth 100 bucks? Definitely. The build quality is easily the best part of the phone and it destroys the build quality on so many other smartphones that cost so much more. However, it's obviously not perfect. The biggest thing being the touch sensitivity, which hopefully will be fixed by Ulephone, and the camera quality isn't great either. But again, you cannot get a perfect phone for 100 bucks, and this one comes pretty close. Now, how does it compare to the Verni Thor? For an extra 5 bucks, you get insane metal build quality and a slightly better battery, but the camera quality on the Verni Thor is better. Definitely check out my review of the Verni Thor and see if the difference in camera quality makes or breaks it for you. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to share the video if you liked it and be sure to subscribe to get the latest review videos on tech.